Welcome back to Pirate Studios. Welcome to the very first video of a new series that I've been wanting to start called How to Record Real Drums. So before we get started, I just wanted to ask you to please subscribe. If you're not already, please hit the like button and please hit the notification bell to all. I don't want you to miss any of this series. It's gonna be great. Also, please become a patron. It's five dollars for a whole month. That's it, five dollars a month. And it really helps support this channel. I also love coffee. You could buy me a coffee, five bucks. As many as you want, down in the link. Also got a cash app. Anyway, so further ado. Why would you want to record real drums? Well, for the same reason as I did. Because I had drummers and me, I was in a band, I didn't have much of anything of recording program or computer. I grew up on computers. My dad built computers my whole life. So luckily I was a bit savvy on Windows, pretty savvy on Windows. But we had a band and we wanted to record our music. I didn't know anything about drum samples. I didn't know anything about electric kits really, about how to turn them into MIDI controllers. And so, I just wanted us to be able to record. We all did. So I thought, I want to record drums. So that was what started me. Now, why would you want to do it this day and age? Well, if you listen to most, most new metal music, all the snares sound the same. All the kicks sound the same. They're perfect. They sit in the mix perfect. They're, they're big. They're, they're larger than life. That's great. Guess what? They're not unique. It's not unique anymore. Now, you may not believe this. Um, I'm not any different than anybody else. I like to scroll my little short videos. And, but people are going to get sick of hearing that sound of music. They may not right now because they don't care. All they're doing is flipping their videos on the phones. But eventually, people are gonna be like, eh, I don't wanna hear that anymore. And you're, guess what? The skill of recording real drums is gonna come back. And so, because you're gonna want something unique. You're not gonna want the same drum sound. And it's just like a guitar player. It's not about the guitar that you play or the pickup that you play or how good you are. It's it's whether you're unique or not. That's what makes things interesting is whether you're unique, not the same dang thing over and over again. Drums are no different. The drummer doesn't want his drums to sound like every other drummer. At least if they care about their craft, like the drummers that I've played with, they want their sound to sound unique. So do I. So this is the introduction, but next video we're gonna show you the mics, how they're set up, and how, how it's all ran, and then there'll be several uh, several episodes, and hopefully they all will be kind of short. And we're, I'm going to show you the idiot way, like me, to do compression and EQ. So the very first thing you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a computer. Now, you may say, I don't have any money for that. Well, there are options to make money. You just got to... Like me, you got to say from the beginning, I was cutting grass before I was cutting grass in middle school because I wanted some these, I wanted on brand pair of shoes. My parents couldn't afford on brand pair of shoes. I was watching, I was wearing Kmart classics. So I wanted these shoes. So I got a lot, I got lucky. I was blessed and a neighbor gave me a free push mower. I started hitting the yards. Hey, can I cut your grass? I got that pair of shoes. Well, I also learned another uh, very important thing is take care of the things that you buy. Um, so I learned both of those. I cut grass, spent 70 something dollars on this pair of nice Adidas shoes. They were tore up in two weeks because I didn't take care of them. Those things haven't changed for me. I realized because I wasn't born rich, like a lot of people, a lot of you weren't born rich. I had to work for everything that I wanted. So that's what I do, and I still do it. So I bought a, I, you know, I was, I bought a computer. 
Um, I also was lucky. My dad has been building computers my whole childhood, my whole life. So I'm pretty Windows savvy. Pretty decent Windows savvy. I can figure it out. So I grew up on computers. And uh, also, my dad's a pirate. So, well, he used to be. <laughs> he used to be a pirate. So I had recording programs at a young age, too. I started off on Sonar, um, Cakewalk Sonar 5. And then I progressed later to Cubase. So the computer, you, you definitely need at least 16 gigs of RAM to be able to run drums, to be able to run an interface with eight channels. So you need an interface with eight channels. So you need a computer, you need an interface, you need a recording program. I highly recommend Reaper. It's $60 and it's great. Like I said, I started off on Sonar 5 and then Cubase. Reaper was the best thing after that. It was a great transition. Great, easy to learn. So many tutorials. Great company. Um, and they're always updating. And it's just great. Interface. What interface should you get? You need something with at least eight channels. I highly recommend two. Because I, I use 10 to 12 microphones. So the best budget friendly um, and quality for eight channels is the Behringer Euphoria UMC 1820, which I have one on my desk right here. Um, I will leave a link to it in the description. It has Midas preamps, and if you don't know what a preamp is, it's, it's, the, it's the volume, it's the gain that your mic cables plug into to give, give it sound. It also has phantom power, which you have to have phantom power for condenser microphones. It has all that all in the unit. So it's, I think it's around 300 bucks or something, 300 something, it's under $400, eight channels. I'll show you a video on how to do, do it with eight channels. But I highly recommend that and then get a, the Behringer, it's like eight extra channels. Um, it's, it's decent, it, it's, it'll do the, it'll get the job done. Then you need plenty of mic cables and then you need a snake to plug your mic cables into to run to your interface. It's a lot easier than running several long cables from your drum mics all the way to wherever your interface is in your computer. So it is a good thing to have a compressor like for your snare for your to, to hit, hit a compressor before it goes into your interface but you do not have to have one. And I've recently been doing a lot more mixing the last two years and I've realized that it would have been nice to have a compressor before it hits the interface but it's not necessary so there you go you've got the things that you need to get started in the next video in part two I'm gonna show you what microphones you need the microphones that I like to use and how they're set up and then we'll do several other parts of each part on how to compress them, how to EQ them, and we're going to do some reverb, and we're going to show you the whole routing setup in Reaper that I use, and uh, how you can get a great drum sound. So if you, if this is something that you would like to learn how to do, please stick with me. Like I said, hit that notification bell, and we're going to do this together, and we're going to, we're going to be able to record real drums and have something unique. So till next time.